Got another question on the aromatic chemistry topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. And just before I start if you hear any sort of background noises we've got builders in at the moment so apologies in advance if there's a bit of distraction from that. Okay so we'll make a start or so compound B reacts with chlorine to produce this compound here so basically the double bond opens up the pi bond breaks and the chlorine atoms from the Cl2 molecule add across the bond. Whereas in compound C, we've got a substitution reaction taking place where one of the hydrogens, you can go on any point there by the way, one of the hydrogens um, substitutes for a chlorine. Moving on to the next part, so explaining the relative resistance to chlorination of compound C compared to B. So in compound C, we've got um, delocalized pi electrons. The electron density of the ring is low, and so it doesn't attract or polarize electrophiles easily. Whereas in B, the pi electrons are localized, they're just shared between those two carbon atoms there. So there's a higher electron density of the pi electrons, therefore it will attract or polarize electrophiles more readily. Moving on to the mechanism for the reaction of uh, compound C with chlorine. So the first step is to generate the electrophile, so that's the halogen carrier catalyst, reacting with chlorine to make the electrophile and an AlCl4- ion. We then take the electrophile and react it with the um, aromatic compound. So we take a pair of electrons from the delocalized ring of pi electrons out to the Cl+. That's going to give us this intermediate here and then we need to take a pair of electrons from the CH bond back in to reform the delocalized ring of pi electrons which generates our organic product here and an H plus ion. And then to show the role of the halogen carrier acting as a catalyst, we need to reform it. So we take the H plus ion that's just been formed, react it with the AlCl4 minus ion that was formed in that first step. That's going to make HCl and the catalyst is reformed. Part B, we've got this unfamiliar reaction we've got to try and work out. So compound C, you can see I've written up its molecular formula there. Compound C can be prepared by trimerization, so that's the combining of three molecules. So three propanones are obviously being um, combined to make compound C. So there's the beginnings of the equation. All we need to do now is a sort of sort out the atoms, the remaining atoms. So you can see we've got six hydrogens, too many on the left and three oxygens, so the other product must be H2O and obviously we need three of them to balance the equation. Part C, predict the number of uh, peaks in the carbon-13 NMR spectra for C and D. So in compound C we've got some equivalent carbon environments, so I'll just explain this colour scheme. So these yellow ones here, they're all equivalent, as are the blue ones, as are the orange ones. So three peaks in the carbon-13 NMR for C, in compound D, we've got some unique carbon environments and some equivalent ones, so obviously unique, unique, unique. They're equivalent, they're equivalent, they're equivalent, unique, unique. So that's a total of eight environments, so eight peaks. So finishing off with the flow chart now, so you'll notice I've written up here the SN and HCl mixture reduces the NO2 group to an NH2 group. So that's basically telling us that we need an NO2 in this molecule here and we're going to have an NH2 down here. So that's the structure of the compound for that box there. So to make that happen, we need to react compound C with nitric acid and we need a catalyst of sulfuric acid. Technically, these acids are both concentrated, but that's not required in the mark scheme. And then to follow on from what I was saying at the start, so we're reducing this NO2 group to an NH2 group. So that's what goes in that box there. And then the final reaction, you'll see I've highlighted this group here. So we basically need to take one of these hydrogens off and put a CH3 C double bond O group on. And the way we do that is we can either react this with ethanoyl chloride or with ethanoic anhydride. You see they both contain that group there. 